Number 37. The value of one British pound is 30% more than the value of one American dollar. That means that one British pound, great British pound, equals one US dollar plus 30% because the British pound is more valuable. Okay, it is 30% more than the value of an American dollar. If we want to um, express in a decimal something that is 30% more, if we want to say 30% more, that's like saying 130%, which is 1.3. So one British, a great British pound equals 1.3 US dollars. A British tourist visiting New Jersey wants to buy a souvenir that costs $36 US dollars with 50 British pounds. So he's going to pay 50 British pounds if the store accepts British pounds. So first thing, 50 great British pounds equals how many US dollars? 50 times 1.3. 50 times 1 is 50. 50 times 0 0.3 is 15. So add them, you get 65 US dollars. So how much money is he going to pay in dollars? 65, even though he's going to pay them as 50 British pounds, but they're the equivalent of $65. If the store accepts British pounds, what should be her change in American dollars? Okay, so she's going to give the person at the store the equivalent of $65 for something that costs $36. How much is her change going to be? 15 minus 6 is 9, and the 6 became a 5. 5 minus 3 is 2, so $29 is the change. Question number 38. A rectangle whose width is 5 inches. So here's my rectangle, and it has a width of 5 and a length that we don't know, so we're just going to call L. Has the same area as a square. Okay, here's your square whose side is 10 inches, whose side is 10 inches. What is the perimeter of the rectangle? Not the length, the perimeter. Okay, we know that the area here equals the area here. What is the area of the rectangle? It's length times width, right? L times W. Width is already 5, so the area here is 5L, 5 times length. What's the area of the square? The area of a square is the side squared or side times side. 10 squared is 100. So from this we can get that 5L, the area of the rectangle, is equal to 100, the area of the square. So 5L equals 100. Divide by 5, you get L equals 20. So the length of this rectangle is 20. Now what? The question says, what is the perimeter of the rectangle? Okay, what is the perimeter of a rectangle? It is the length plus the width plus the length plus the width. Or it's 2 times the length plus the width. So it's 2 times. The length we got is 20. The width we already know is 5. So it's 2 times 25, which is 50. Okay, 50. So the answer is D. Okay, of course this square and this rectangle are not drawn to scale. Number 40, the last question on the test. Number 39, we already have a separate video for. Number 40, how many positive factors of 36 are also multiples of both 2 and 3? When something is a multiple of 2 and 3, then it is divisible by 6. Remember from the rules um, to test for divisibility by 6, we check if that number is divisible by both 2 and 3. So anyways, we want positive factors of 36 that are multiples of both 2 and 3. So let's first start by listing the factors of 36. In order to find the factors and not get mixed up, we always ask ourselves, what times what gives me the number I'm looking for? So what times what gives me 36? So 1 times 36 gives me 36. So these are two factors. Then 2 times what gives me 36? 18. Okay, 3 times 12, yes. 4 times 9, correct. 5 times, nothing. 6 times 6, okay. 7 times nothing. 8, 
No. 9, we already have that. 9 times 4. 10. Nope. So we're done. So here are the positive factors of 36. How many of these are also multiples of 2 and 3, or are also multiples of 6? First of all, we have the number 6. It's a multiple of 6. And 12 is a multiple of 6. 18 is a multiple of 6. And 36 is a multiple of 6. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the answer is B.